give away over 10 sewing machines. That's right, including two $8,000 chargers. That's right, sewing furniture as well. $5,000 worth of fabric. And a boatload of thread and notions. All the winners had to do was watch and comment. This year we have six events planned. So if you wanna be part of the fun in 2023, like this video and follow us on all our socials. Plus, share this video and spread the joy. The larger we can make these events, the more prizes we can give away. Who knows? If we get enough people to join our live stream, we might be able to give out twice, twice as, as many, many prizes. prizes. See you soon. Welcome to the social circle. If you're new here, my name is Trisha and we have a fun day in store for you. We are going to be making this adorable little mug rug. So you may be expecting to see a couple of faces that are not going to be here today. So first, uh, you're used to seeing Brian. Brian is off at school getting things organized for his upcoming semester. So he's out today, but I have Alex with me and she'll pop on in just a second to say hi. Also, Kelsey Smith was supposed to be joining us, but sadly she had a family emergency, so she's not able to join us today. But if you do not follow Kelsey, she is amazing. She does great little tips and tricks and little projects that are really fun to do. So hopefully you'll be able to see her in the future, but you can follow her at Kelsey underscore crafts and she's on TikTok. And also, you may notice that my voice is a little funky. I just got home from a five-day trip to my family's up in Minnesota. We tend to talk a lot and laugh a lot. And also, because they're up in Minnesota, I'm blaming it on the fires. There was a haze in the air. So I sound a little raspy, so I apologize, but we will do our best to get through it. So I do want to pop up Alex here, and so she can say hi, and we can get started with the day. Here's Alex. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and we also and we have, have Brian, Brian in the comments. Brian, 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 all right, let's get started. If we want to go back and we will say good morning to some of our lovely friends that are joining us. I already see some familiar names. So Robin the Chicken, hello, hello. Good morning from Washington State. Awesome. Patricia, thank you as always for joining us. We appreciate you. Norma from California. How are you doing today? Harriet Ann. I love seeing all your names, guys. It's so fun to see our friends on here. Good morning, Helen. Simone. This is awesome. So I hope you guys are really enjoying this um, event every time we do it. It's so much fun. We're on now episode seven. I can't believe it. Time's just flying. So we are very excited to continue doing the social circle every week and have a whole lot of fun. Last week, as you know, we didn't do the social circle because we had So Creative Live and that was amazing. It was for National Sewing Machine Day. We had a wonderful time, gave away a lot of prizes, had great education. I had seen some posts on our Facebook group today saying they got uh, Bernie's book. So thank you for getting that. I know you're going to love his book, but we had so much good stuff on there. But we've also seen a lot of comments saying, oh, dang, I missed it. I, I wanted to join and I didn't get to. Well, be prepared. We have another So Creative Live event coming up in July. So July 10th through the 14th. So we have a five-day event this time around. We have so many great people joining us. We have um, product demos, machine demos, education. A lot of our friends are going to be back. We're going to have a lot of good stuff there. And I had posted a video not too long ago showing that we had over $25,000 worth of giveaways. I think we're about at 28,000 now. So next, um, 
Next So Creative Live is gonna be a whole lot of fun. But before we actually get started with this project, actually, Alex, if you wanna go ahead and play that little video, we'll show you what it's all about. Do you love to sew? Go ahead. Do you love to sew? Would you like a chance to win thousands of dollars worth of free sewing supplies? Join us for Sew Creative Live Christmas in July. Five super fun days with bucket loads of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine demos by dozens of expert educators, crafting and sewing projects, and unbeatable special event discounts. Whether you're just starting your sewing journey or you're a sewing pro, we'll have something for you. Over $25,000 worth of machines, sewing furniture, and sewing supplies will be given away during this virtual sewing event. Join us July 10th through the 14th. Each morning we'll begin live streaming at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. You can join us from our website, sewingpartsonline.com, our YouTube, or our Facebook. This event is designed to bring you great deals and lots of laughs. Bump up your sewing skills all from the comforts of your home. As you can see, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. We have a fun theme this time around and we are really excited to decorate in here and have that wonderful event. But as for today's event, we know we're doing the social circle and we are going to be making this adorable mug rug. It is the pattern, the make and take muggy rug. It's a cut loose pattern. These are wonderful. They are um, available in like a cardstock type pattern and you can get a binder where you can keep all of these wonderful patterns. This particular one, it does tell you um, how many hours it takes, you know, what type of project it is so you can keep everything nice and organized. This one does specify that it's an under two hour project. I made one this morning. It, it comes together pretty quickly. So hopefully some people will be sewing along with me. Now we are going to be using a really cool tool, which this was the first time I had ever used it and I will definitely be using it more. It's called the hexagon trim tool with creative grids. It's really, really cool. You can do all sorts of different hexagons, different sizes. When you get it, make sure to hold on to this little packaging. It actually comes like this and then has the the little plastic over it, but don't throw this away because if you open it up, it's going to give you some patterns and instructions so you can do something a little fun with that as well. So that's a really cool tool. Now, according to the pattern, you also need a single-sided light fusible batting. We didn't have this particular one on our website, so I had it added. So I don't have that with me today. However, I am just using regular 80-20 poly cotton batting. So I'm using up scraps. I wanted to give it a try, see if it would work, and it worked great. Instead of having a fusible batting, I just used this and a little adhesive spray, and we were good to go. So that's what I'm going to do today. But if you get the pattern, just know that it is gonna say something a little bit different. But let's talk about what we need. So we start with a little square. This one's a three by three. This is going to be your main color here, right in the center. This would be really a great spot if you did fussy cutting. Um, if you're unfamiliar with fussy cutting, it's where it has a little picture in the fabric and you wanna cut that out, That just that particular one. You could totally do that, put maybe a little bird in there or something fun in the middle. And then you're gonna have, they label it as a light or dark fabric. Today, mine is going to be, this is gonna be my dark fabric. That's what we're gonna call it. And then our light fabric. And I'm gonna use these cute little, what I think look like chicken feet. <laughs> and it will give you the instructions on what you need to cut for that. We've got three of these that are, I believe, four and a half by one and five eighths. And then three of these that are also four and a half by one and five eighths. And then the same thing applies for the second row, and you're going to do five and a half by one and five eighths. So again, that'll all be noted in the pattern, but you can see that it does like two rows around it. So these are gonna be the four and a half long, and these are gonna be the five and a half. So I hope you can see that okay. We're gonna try and switch back, to, back and forth between this camera and this camera back here. So hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Since Alex is new to running the back end, if I miss something, she's just gonna holler out and say, hey, take a peek at the question and we will get it all situated. So I hope that I'm gonna see a bunch of muggy rugs 
on our Facebook group. We're seeing tons of pictures, which I'm absolutely loving. We are having so much fun seeing everybody's projects. So if you are sewing along, be sure to post your pictures there. If you're getting, um, if you're gonna be watching the replay, go ahead and make it and then you can post it whenever you want. You don't have to do it right away. Also, I do wanna give you a heads up that next week we are going to be doing a Corky wallet. I'm really excited to do this. I tried it not too long ago with some scrap fabric I had. I had some faux leather. Don't use faux leather. It was very thick. <laughs> I did get through it with a leather needle and a Teflon foot, but I'm excited to try it with the corky, the cork. There we go, the cork material. So that's gonna be next week. And I'll post everything for next week's social circle after we get off today. So I think we're about ready to scoot forward and get to making this adorable little muggy rug. And I love that it says it's large enough for your cup and a cookie. So I feel like I'm missing a cookie, <laughs> but I'm gonna make a matching one today. So I'll have a couple of these available. All right. So we've talked about this fabric. I'm also gonna show you the backing. You can pick whatever color that you would like on your fabric. I tried to coordinate with the middle, but it is up to you, have fun with it. Obviously they're adorable. You can have a lot of fun with the different colors, but I did the matching center. A couple of things that you may want. I went ahead and did, um, like I said, the adhesive spray. I grabbed a few pins and some wonder clips just in case I need those. At the end, we do hand sew a little piece here. So I have my needle and thread ready to go. If you don't have any hand needles, feel free to check out our site. We have these little packs. They're super handy to have on, on hand when you do need to do some hand sewing. Of course, we want a little marking tool. Now, this particular marking tool is very fine tipped. And initially, I didn't think I was going to like it. But with this little tool, it has a bunch of little holes throughout that you're able to mark and give you a perfect seam allowance, which I'll show you a little bit later on. But I tried a couple of different pencils and it was difficult to get it into the hole. So you do want a really fine tipped marking tool. The one that I'm using here is the Fine Marker Blue. I believe this is by Clover or something similar is by Clover. So that's one of them. And then of course we're using our hexagon trim tool. And then after this particular show, I will put links up in our, uh, excuse me, up in our Facebook group. So you'll be able to get all of the, these supplies if you are wanting to try this. Another thing that I always have on hand, I love this little Omni Grid ruler. This particular one is the eight by two and a half, super handy. And it worked perfectly trimming this up. So that one was great, a pair of little snips. I would recommend having a mat and a rotary cutter for this project. When you're using the trim tool, you're gonna trim around the tool. It just makes it a whole lot easier. If you didn't have a rotary cutter and a rotary mat, you could mark it with the template, just make a, a mark and then cut it with the scissors, but it's not going to be as accurate unless you use the rotary mat and rotary cutter. Of course, if you've watched before, you know me and my little bent tweezers, we have those. Also, another one of my absolute favorite tools is the 4-in-1 Alex Anderson tool. This thing is going to come in very handy. Um, we've got an awl, so you can use that to push fabric through. I didn't find that I used that particular part of this tool too much in making this first one, but you definitely use this little sloped end. If you don't have your iron, you can go ahead and um, press open your seams using that. Speaking of iron, let me go ahead and plug my iron in now. I just didn't wanna have it hot before, so I'll have that ready to go when we need it. And then I believe that about covers it, other than my little gauge. So again, excuse my voice, talk a lot. I see that Rachel's on, so she's putting links in the chat with any of the product that I do mention. So thank you for that, Rachel. Appreciate you. 
Okay, so first things first, we are going to start with our little square. So we're gonna start with a little three by three square and we are gonna turn it into this adorable little hexagon. Now, I've already cut this out because I want to get this one started, but I do wanna have Alex swap to the other camera and I will show you what I'm doing on this camera. All right. Do you wanna put that one up full screen, Alex? We're gonna give it just a second so it can be clear. Takes just a moment to kind of focus itself. Okay, so if you can see here, up at the top, there's a hexagon right here. You take your little piece of fabric and you're able to put that within. Notice that, I'm gonna try to hold it still. Notice that the hexagon is within the fabric. We're going to first trim off this end and then we're gonna flip it around and trim off this other end. So I'm just going to lay this down and try to still get out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. We're just gonna give that a little trim. And this is very easy. I'm just gonna to try to keep my elbow out of the, the shot for you. stand. Maybe I'll do this better. Now, normally I wouldn't go that direction, but because we're in a limited space, I'm going to do it that way. Okay. So notice we have one side cut. Now we're going to flip it around and you're going to line up that bottom part with what you just cut. And when I move the fabric, you can see it better. I'm lining up with this bottom part right here. And then I'm going to trim off the top. So it'll just take a second to trim that off. And Alex holler at me if my arm is in the way. <laughs> And there we go. Now the pattern says to start with three inches. So we do have to trim off a little bit on each side. If you had a two and a half inch square, you would be able to already have your hexagon already cut out. So what I've done with the, or what I did with the other one, I just turned it around and lined everything up on this one and then I use those handy dandy little holes in the mark or in the tool and marked those holes. And then from there, you're able to take your little tool, your little ruler, and I'm going to do a quarter inch. So I'm just going to line that up with the dots. and then mark that and then I'll cut off the excess. I think they must have chosen to do the three inch just to give you a little leeway in case maybe you cut it incorrectly or something like that. But if you did a lot of these, you probably could just go ahead and do a two and a half inch square instead of a three inch so you wouldn't have to cut off this excess. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. And that will give us our little hexagon to start. So if you need a little bit of time, just let me know. Um, I'm going to try to do this at the pace that it kind of suggests. So we're looking at about an hour, hour and a half. There we go. And there we have our adorable little hexagon. How cute is that, right? The other fun thing about this tool is you could do blocks that have a larger hexagon. So you can use any of these sizes. All of this, this technique applies to any one of them. And the nice thing about this tool is you can scan it, have this little item here, scan that, and then it'll give you instructions as well. Let's see on the bottom, different options. You could get really creative with it. So. 
I would love to hear what you guys think about this tool. Does it look easy to use? I'm a fan. I'm going to have a whole lot of fun with it. We are going to be making a lot more muggy ruggies. <laughs> Excuse my chair. Okay, so now we're going to grab our pattern here. And I love that they note that we need to grab our fabric. So they're starting with the light fabric. I'm going to call this my light fabric. Now they talk about centering it on one side of your hexagon. All of the seam allowances in the pattern are a scant quarter inch. I was doing my little measurement earlier and I found that on mine, I can line up with the side of my foot. Now you're gonna have to look at your machine just to make sure that you do get a scant quarter inch. But as you can tell with a project like this, if you're at a quarter inch or a little bit larger, you know, it's not the end of the world if it's not an exact scant quarter inch. So it's forgiving. I see Sandra says, looks really easy. Awesome. Very cool. Cool tool. Yes, I agree. It is definitely a neat tool. Okay, so we are going to start with our little hexagon and we're gonna put that right sides up. We're gonna take our light fabric and we are going to find the center of this. The reason we're finding a center is because this is the only time during the pattern that we're going to start sewing in the middle and then out, not all the way across. So it says to find your center here. And I just roughly found my center on this side as well. I just fold it and pinch it, makes a little mark. That's enough for it. And then what I did was just placed that right sides together, just like that. And then you're having your fabric coming towards the inside, not the outside, okay? So I also took my little marking tool and just marked that center so I don't sew past it because later we're going to flip this up to be able to continue the hexagon all the way around. So you don't want to sew too far over. Again, this is the only time that you're going to um, so halfway across. So we're just going to plop this under the foot. Got a question. All right. Miss the size of the knee or the size of the fabric. Okay. So the one that we're using right now, the first round, these are going to be one and five eighths by four and a half. The second row around, those are going to be one and five eighths by five and a half and you're going to have three of each color in each size. And for those of you that are just popping on, I'm also gonna just show you, this is the pattern. You've got the make and take muggy rug. They do a wonderful job listing all of your cutting instructions, even for a couple of them. So if you wanted a pair, this makes a really great gift. Perfect. Do we have any other questions, Alex? All right. Perfect. So we are going to get started. I'm going to slide this under. And again, my machine, I can just put it to the edge of my foot. That makes it nice and easy. And on the most part, we're not going to have to backstitch, but in this particular spot, I am gonna just put a little backstitch. The reason that we're not backstitching the majority of the time is because the seams cross over each other, so it's unnecessary. So you're going to sew beyond the hexagon. You just want to make sure that you sew all the way. So we're just going to sew past it and then we'll give that a cut. Here comes our handy dandy tool. You'll see me using this a lot. I'm going to scooch this over here and you'll just flip this over and give it a little press. I love this. Now, I had mentioned that this is a four in one tool, but I only showed you two items. So you have your awl, which helps you move thick fabric through. This is like an extra finger. It works really well. And then you also have, of course, your seam ripper, and then your little seam press. And this little pointy end helps you turn corners. We'll be using that a little bit later when we poke out all of these 
little corners and make them look nice and sharp. So wonderful tool, great to have in your sewing space. So we're gonna go back and press this out. And I'm gonna grab my little snips and clean up as I go, because that always makes everything better. There we go. I would love to hear what people are doing for their summer. As I mentioned, I just got home from Minnesota. We had so much fun. I was able to get a birthday in and I was able to get a graduation and all sorts of fun stuff. And my brother got engaged. <laughs> so it was a fabulous weekend, but I'd love to hear what you guys are doing. Hopefully sewing, right? <laughs> okay. So now that we have that done, we're going to work in a counter in a clockwise motion. So we're just going to flip this and have that this hexagon part at the top. That one moved to the side. And now we're going to once again do right sides together. And we're doing that with the little hexagon. Tammy, thank you very much. We are very excited for his engagement. <laughs> very, very excited. She's a sweetheart. So if this had a right side to it, we would put right sides together. We are going to line up the raw edge of this particular piece with the raw edge of the hexagon, but it's going to overlap this particular piece. So we're going to place that down. And it says centered, but as long as you are reaching both sides, I was just double checking to make sure that when you open it up, it would be covering it. It has a little overhang over here, little overhang over here, and you'll be good. So I found it easier to not use pins in this particular case. I just went ahead and lined everything up and then I moved over this way. Let me just make sure I put that thread under. And again, I do not have to back stitch because we're just going to cross seams throughout. So we're just going to take this slow, go down here, and then you can see that this is still lined up. I just lift it up, make sure everything's good, and you want to sew beyond the hexagon. Just like that. And then we open it up and use our little tool to press that open. See how nice that works? That way you don't have to get your iron out at every point. It actually says to use this throughout the whole thing. Um, it is recommended in the pattern to use this particular tool and it is a very good suggestion. You do also use your iron to press in between each round after we complete it, but this helps throughout. Getting it nice and straight. So we're just gonna rotate once again, grab our fabric. You can be mindful of your direction if you want. I'm one of those people that like to flip it out and make sure. So you can see if I went this way and flipped it out after I sewed it on, my little chicken feet are pointing different directions. Oh no, they're pointing the same, there we go. So it is correct. Now, if I went this way, doop, there, then they would be pointing different directions. So it's completely up to you if you wanna be mindful of the directional fabric. So I'm going to just lay it down, flip it up and it looks good. Okay, so we're gonna lay it across again. And you can see that we're just going to continue to repeat this. I would love to hear if anybody has used this tool or something similar and if you've been a fan because like I had mentioned before, I am new to using this tool and I really like it. When we get to the trimming part, you'll see how neat it is. Okay, we're sewing beyond the hexagon. And then we're going to flip it up and continue. So Alex, what are you doing this summer? Anything fun? Um, actually, I think that I got all of my summer fun fully completed like last weekend. 
I've been traveling and doing all kinds of stuff, and now I think I'm ready to just chill for the, rest of the <laughs> summer. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with chilling. <laughs> okay, so we'll go back to taking our dark fabric. We're going to do right sides together. Again, I am doing, if this was a right-sided fabric, either one on, works for this one. But I'm going to be putting pretty side to pretty side with this up here. Raw edges are matching. Does this particular part um, look confusing to anybody? Do we need some clarification or... Do we find that this looks pretty straightforward? If you guys want to put that in the comment and let me know what you're thinking so far. This is why it's really convenient to be able to just use the side of my foot. It's nice. So if you can see here, I'm past my hexagon, so I'm fine to cut my fabric. We're just gonna keep going. So since you're going to see me doing the same thing, I'm, I'll repeat myself several times, but while we're at it, um, if you're just joining, I was telling everybody that we're going to be doing So Creative Live again in July, which we are very excited about. It's going to be July 10th through the 14th, and we have so many great people joining us. And I am super excited for the giveaways. We're going to be doing Aero Furniture. We're going to have Grace Product. We're going to have um, a Grace Machine. We have over $25,000, or now I think $28,000 worth of prizes for that particular event. So I hope that you all can tune in to that as well. And Kelsey was supposed to be here today, so um, I don't believe she's going to make it in July, but I'm pretty sure she'll be back for our September event for So Creative Live. And then we are definitely going to be inviting her back to do the social circle, so hopefully she can do another fun project. As you can see, we're scooching around here. I'm going to press this with my tool. And Trisha... Tammy says that it looks pretty straightforward to me, so I think you're doing an awesome job on your instructions. Oh, thank you very much. And Tammy, I'm glad to hear that it's pretty straightforward. Sometimes I get a little bit nervous where if it's a new tool to me that I'm not explaining it very well. So if you ever need clarification, please let me know. It doesn't offend me at all if you say, huh, what the heck does that, does that mean? <laughs> I have no problem. All right, so remember at the beginning when I said we only sewed half of it. This is why, because we're going to put this last piece right here. Now, if we didn't leave this part open, we wouldn't be able to cross it over and complete that little hexagon, right? So what I like to do is just fold this back to get it out of the way. I don't want to accidentally sew it. I'm just going to take a pin and scooch it out of the way. And then we can do this last part. Again, pretty side to pretty side. We're going to match up our raw edges. And then we're going to flip it here. And we'll do our quarter inch. I love this. If you had to make a bunch of gifts, this would be an awesome present because you could knock out quite a few of them, make some that are, you know, personalized, have fabric that the person that you're giving it to would really like. And then you could maybe give them a bag of cookies since I'm missing cookies with mine. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, I'm going to be grabbing a cookie later. Okay, so we have that. We're gonna press that open and I'm just gonna release this little piece now. And you'll see that we're going to be able to then sew across here but we're gonna flip this back and sew it. Now, here's another thing that's really handy about this tool, because when we flip this, you'll see that there's a little stitch across here. You just take your seam ripper, and you can just release a couple of those stitches, which is totally fine because the stitches cross over here. All this is doing is releasing our seam allowance to let us um, lay it flat. You could do this without um, releasing this stitch, but 
I thought it laid nicely when I did it this way. So that's what I'm doing. Robin the chicken order awesome. So Robin the chicken, I am very excited to see your project. I know it'll be adorable. Okay. Very cool. So now I've released that and I'm actually going to release this one too, just because I like it to lay flat. Once we add our little bit of batting, you're not even going to be able to see it, but I know in my brain that that seam is the wrong direction. So it would bug me. We're gonna open that up. Okay, and let's talk about not having a good plan of drinking a cup of coffee before this. My hands are shaking, sorry guys. <laughs> okay, so I've opened that up and now it'll be able to lay flat when I sew across. So again, we're we had flipped that out of the way, so now we're gonna flip it this way, and we are gonna sew across here. And we're just gonna complete where we had started before, so we're gonna come all the way across and meet up, and then I'll backstitch right there. And let's just make sure that lays nice and flat. And I like to just use my fingers to kind of hold it Again, I didn't use any pins. I found it a lot easier to just place it under and then go. So we're just gonna go all the way down, make sure everything's flat underneath. Come up to my previously sewn section and then do a, a little back stitch there. Okay, how cool is that, right? So at this point, we can use our iron and just do a little press and you'll see how nice and flat it gets. And then we get to use our handy dandy tool again. And this is the part that I really like. So on here, look how nice and flat that is now. Let me grab our tool and on here you're going to see this little, let me see if I can place something behind here, there we go. You'll see the little white hexagon, right? We are going to use that to match it up with the blue hexagon on our little buggy rug and then we are going to trim using the top. And then you have to alternate and then, you know, keep moving and you'll continue to trim all the way around. So I'm going to scooch this stuff here. And I think if I put it right here, you should be able to see what I'm doing. How does that look? Pretty good. I think so. Okay. So we're going to start here. And again, we are going to move clockwise. So I'm placing that white little hexagon, matching it up with my blue hexagon, and I'm going to cut this side and this side. And this is so nice and neat. I know I keep apologizing for getting my arm in the way, but I hate that it, it does get in the way. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing but this is really easy to do. It just makes it a little awkward when you're trying to stay out of the camera. But we're going to lift this up. We're going to rotate it clockwise. Match up that little white hexagon again. And I also like to just look on the side and you can see the little guidelines on the tool in addition to lining up the white spot here too. So now we're just going to trim the top here. I think this would be an awesome project to do with my little sister. She kind of wants to start sewing. It's like if you pick something nice and easy, then they're going to love it, right? <laughs> I'll have more siblings sewing with me. Okay, I'm going to lift this up. Again, rotate it. One of my siblings does sew. She actually um, did a lot more sewing than I did. And 
her and her husband make really cool uh, Christmas costumes. And I know that sounds weird, but he was, uh, he did like a big cape <laughs> and did Father Christmas. He's really funny. He has a whole lot of fun during Christmas. Again, we trim that off. We're going to lift it up, rotate it. Okay, who's impressed by this tool yet? I am. I love it. Alex, you think you could do this? I think I can totally try, especially if I watch the replay of this. <laughs> Speaking of replays, this is going to be available on our YouTube and our Facebook. So if you weren't able to sew today with me, you can always sew um, by watching the replay. We're going to lift this up, flip it again, one more time. I am loving it. Very cool. So I want to know, I know we had briefly mentioned camping last time. Anybody going camping this year? Up in Minnesota, we stayed at my grandparents' house and we had over a hundred of us there. It was amazing. But we all camped. We brought tents and trailers and all sorts of good stuff. But the mosquitoes, oh my goodness, they were horrible. But I love camping. All right, so we have one round done. How cute is that? Again, if you're just popping on, this is what we are making. We are doing a muggy rug, and this is for your coffee cup. And it says it has room for a cookie. So I think it's adorable. So we've got one round done, and we will start with the next one. Now, as I mentioned previously, we started halfway through, and then we were able to cross it over. We do not have to do that at this point. We're just able to take our fabric and start just like we did before. Pretty side to pretty side. Again, if you want to double check yourself. Let's see, I want those to, those to line up. So we'll do it, whoops, do it this way. And that's opposite. My, my little muggy rug wants to run away on me. There we go. I just want my little chicken feet to be facing the same direction. So again, you just want to center it. As you've noticed, I've not really found, like marked the center. You can kind of eyeball it. If you would like to be really particular, you're more than welcome to just fold them in half. You're going to find your center points that way, and then you can match up those raw edges. But as long as you're just matching it up here, you're good. So again, we're matching up those raw edges. We'll sneak this under there and we will start round two. If you're just joining the second round of fabric, these are gonna be one and five eighths by five and a half instead of one and five eighths by four and a half. So here we go. Yeah, and if you were here when we first started, I mentioned next week we're going to be doing the Corky Wallet, which is super cute. And it's a nice, um, easy pattern to do, and it's a very useful little pattern. I'm going to do that. Um, but I'll post some tips on things that you'll be using for that, because with cork, you may want to get a different foot as well. Uh, you might want to try like a, a Teflon foot works well. That's what I'm probably going to be swapping out for next week. All right, so we have one row. And we'll put my little seam press back on. Use that edge to press these down. You've heard me mention it. These are my three favorite tools if you're looking for goodies in your sewing space. I cannot be without them. Okay, so we did that one, and now we'll grab our so-called dark fabric. Lay it on there. And this pattern is very forgiving. It's going to hold your coffee cup just the same even if you're a smidge off, right? Nobody's going to notice but you. <laughs> Norma, thank you. I see that you said it's adorable. Are you going to be making one? I really think this would be a super cute gift. 
There we go. We're going to press them open. And then we're going to grab our light fabric. Make sure my chicken feet are facing the right way when I flip it. <laughs> There we go. And you know what? I started with the wrong color, but that's okay. I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. The design's gonna look slightly different, but that's all right. At least the family, the color's the same. You get the technique down. That's what I get for talking about mosquitoes, right? See, you'll see that I'm stacking it this way on top of each other versus having the opposite color. Mine did more of a, a round look here. So it'll look slightly different, but that's all right. It's still adorable. But the pattern does indicate which one to start with, so that's my bad. So we're doing pretty side to pretty side and laying it again. And this particular pattern, again, is made by the Cut Loose Press. I really want to do one of those binders because you can keep all these patterns handy and together. And if you're looking for a quick project, you can go to the ones that are two hours long. If you wanted a longer project, you can select one that's, you know, the more than two hours. And then they also have a two to six hour and then a six hour plus. So it gives you options depending on what you're wanting to work on. Okay, give a little press. I see Tammy says, I agree, it'll make a great gift. Maybe a little goodie basket. Oh, that's a great idea. Yep, for a birthday, Christmas is coming soon. I love it. All the muggy rugs. See, again, if I flipped it, my little feet are going to be opposite. So we're going to do it this way. I don't know what these are supposed to be, but to me, they look like chicken feet. I think they're cute. I wish I knew all the, like, fabric pattern designers and everything. I always just go by, oh, that's so pretty. I'm really bad at naming the different designers. So props to all you designers out there. Okay, and again we can take our little tool. Okay, and as you can see we've got a larger spot here. This time around we're going to just lay this. You can see this particular little straight edge. We would just line up the raw edge there. It's getting closer now, so you can kind of center that. And we're going to stitch that one quarter inch all the way across. We're getting there. Sandra said that she's seeing Christmas ornaments. Oh, how cute. Doing like a mini version of one of these. I wonder if we have a mini version of this tool. Like, as I mentioned before, I'm new to this tool, so I am definitely going to be checking them out, seeing what we have, but that's cute, a little Christmas ornament. You could make a muggy rug and then have a matching Christmas ornament of a mini version. That would be sweet. All right, and there we go. That's round two. So why don't we take a little vote? What do we like better? since I made my oopsie on this one with my color choices, <laughs> my matching, or we have this one where it looks like it's more rounded. So is it a happy mistake? It's a design element, right? Our friend Karen Miller says that it's not a mistake. It's a design element. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick little press here and then we'll use the tool once again to trim everything up nice and even. As you can see, this is a nice quick project. So we've got that pressed. 
This time around, instead of using the white little box, let me grab that fabric again so you can see it. Instead of using the white marking, there's a dashed line that you can follow and we will line it up with that instead. So it shows round one is the white and then it has a dashed line that says round two. So we're going to take round two on the dashed line and we're going to match it up and we're gonna trim around the edges just like we did before. I love it, Sir Robin the Chicken said, this tool is not expensive at all. I was like, wow, give me. <laughs> I like your enthusiasm, Sir Robin the Chicken. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so we're gonna stand up so I can do this without getting in your way here. Once again, we're going to start. I'm gonna line that up on the dashed lines and then hold it down. Ooh, the other thing that I wanted to mention about this tool, as you can see on my OmniGrid ruler, I have the little grips on here, which are really nice. They help prevent my ruler from moving on me, right? Well, the Creative Grids hexagon trim tool, you can kind of see it on the camera, but it's got a little raised, um, a little raised plastic almost, and it helps with gripping, and it really does help a lot. So I thought that was a, a cool little added bonus on here. Uh, okay, so we're doing round two on the dashed lines, matching everything up, and we are going to work our way around. Nice cut here. And for those of you that are just joining, as I had mentioned, there's a fusible batting that you can use here on the upcoming steps. But we're gonna use just regular 80-20 batting and some adhesive spray, and it worked great as well. So you can use up scraps. It's a wonderful scrap buster. You can use fat quarters, or you could just use um, a bunch of different scraps and have you know fun colors together. It's a great scrap buster. So again, we're gonna turn it. Line it up, make sure everything's good and straight, and keep on a trimming. This is the perfect day for a quick project since my voice is so squeaky. I told my dad, I was like, I don't get why I'm losing my voice. I didn't talk that much, but dang, we do a lot of talking and laughing. So maybe it was just the laughing part. Are you guys good at closing your blade? <laughs> I like to think that most of the time I'm pretty good at it, but I do sometimes leave it open and I'm like, I am totally gonna cut myself one of these times. Need to be safe with our blades. little click there we go and then up rotate one more I want to see the variations as well For anybody that gets it if you try the other options too, let me know there we go so I just want to show you this again it's really cool it gives you all of the instructions different options. Upside down doesn't work, right? There we go. It's really cool. So don't get rid of your instructions. It's a great little pamphlet. Okay, so now we have the top done. You can give it another extra little press if you want. So again, for anybody watching the replay, I want to just note that I started with the wrong color and you can see the difference in the design. We're calling it a happy little design. It's a design element, but this is what it's actually supposed to look like when you're following the pattern. So just a heads up on that. So now what you would normally do is take your new topper here and you would put your fusible batting on the back here and match up the this 
you know, the ugly side to the fusible side of your batting and press those together and then trim it. But I'm using up spare batting. This is just 80-20 low loft batting. And what I'm going to do is use adhesive spray and spray the back of this and then plop it on the batting. Now, please use a well-ventilated area and try not to get this all over your fingers. If you do, it's miserable. I will tell you that. But you can easily get it off using olive oil. A friend on Facebook, I'd reached out to our Facebook group and I was like, I cannot get this stuff off my fingers. And she gave me that little tip and it works wonderfully. So I'm actually just going to pick up my little garbage over here and lay it in and I'm gonna spray it in the garbage can so I don't get a ton of adhesive all over here. Do as I say, not as I do, right? So I'm gonna just take that with my tweezers. We're making it work and using up scraps. I like that. And I dropped it too soon. Look how sticky that is. There, I can just plop it on there as long as it has batting on all sides. I'll be just fine. Now, you could use the tool to cut this, but because this isn't what it actually calls for, I'm just gonna use my OmniGrid little ruler and follow each side and trim that off so it's all the same size. Easy peasy. This would be a wonderful retreat project. If you get together and sit and visit. I like it. Put my, put my garbage over here. Trim everything down. When we put the backing on, we'll use another part of the tool. Those holes that I had mentioned help you mark where the seam allowance is. So that way you pivot at the right point. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. It's really handy. So a lot of thought went into this particular tool. And let me see. Yeah. Gene and Wright, designed by Gene. So thank you for that, because you really put a lot of thought into this little trim tool. Creative Grids offers a lot of really cool tools. We're gonna have Sheila Christensen on So Creative Live in July, and I'm really excited to see hers. She's gonna be using her triangle ruler and showcase some of her techniques and her books, and we'll see some of the creative grid rulers in action. So we'll all get inspired with different options, things that we can make. Okay. We're getting there. Okay, so now we have that batting on and we've got the topper. See what I mean? This is a great alternative for the fusible batting. So. If a pattern calls for something, we can think through the process and think, uh, will this work? And sure enough, it does. So now what we're going to do is take our eight by eight piece of backing and we are going to put these pretty sides to pretty sides. And I like this because you don't have to be particular at all. You just lay it down. We're gonna use our handy dandy little tool and we are going to line up this guideline this time around, and I'll try to lift this up here so you can see, we're going to end up lining that up like that to trim around it. So there are so many guidelines on here. There's just like unlimited options. So we're going to stand up. I'm going to place this here. 
and we'll cut around it first and then we will lay it back down and we'll mark all of those little holes and I'll show the holes close up so you can see. I think my, my blade's about done for. That might need to go into my blade saver. If you've never used a blade saver, they are an awesome option for giving your blades a little bit extra life. I don't have one. Oh, I have one here. We've got a blade saver and we also have the gypsy one. This has a blade in it too. But the blade saver gives you an option for putting uh, that in there. I should show it to you. I'm getting, I'm getting sidetracked with all the cool little fun tools, right? Come back. You know what's funny? Anytime I come back from Minnesota, I realize that I pick up my accent. Like, I talk very Minnesotan when I come home. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. I sound like I'm from, from the north still. I've been in Tennessee for, what, coming on like 13 years or something like that. You would think my Minnesota accent would be gone. We're just going to keep rotating clockwise. And if you weren't doing this for the video, obviously you can see how quick this would come together. Just like, <laughs> like my sound effects. Uh, cut, cut. Now that everything is trimmed up, I'm going to show you the little holes that are in the tool. So if you scooch over here, I'm getting batting fur everywhere, right? <laughs> you can see that there's a bunch of little holes on this template. Can you see that? Not really, I'm sorry. Trust me on it, there's a bunch of little holes. So what we're going to do is we are going to line this up and we are going to mark our pivot points here on these kind of corners. What that's gonna do is when we sew around it, it is going to show us exactly where we need to leave our needle in, pivot our fabric, and continue sewing. So we're gonna get a nice, even corner all the way around. So this is where it comes in handy to have our little marking tool that's fine tipped because it gets into that little tool. <laughs> Rebecca just said, change it, Trisha, change it. I need the blade or the blade changer. I have the blade changer here. It's just my little table that I'm using to hold my stuff is kind of in the way of my drawer, but let me see if I can get to it so I can show it to you. I love that tool. So you guys are patient with me, right? Let's go here. I'm making all the noise. There we go. And they come in different sizes, which is really cool. I found it. <laughs> so this one is actually for a 60 millimeter blade. But see how cool this is? You're able to do the little flower, release this screw, and then put your old blade in here. And then once you have put it in there, you can just replace this piece by lining the finger holes up here. And then you take your new little item, plop it in, and you're able to do chain piecing and cut a bunch of your chain pieced items apart. It is so handy. Now, I can't change the blade I'm using right now because this particular one is a 45 millimeter, so it has a different blade saver, but like I said, they do come in different sizes, so a great, great way to use your old blades, nicked or dull, which I will be changing it after this particular show. All right, so now what we're going to do is mark all of those little holes so we know where to pivot. I'm getting excited, you guys. We are, we're doing well. This is coming together well. I'm glad that people are liking this tool. I'm, I was excited about it. I'm like, I hope I'm not the only one that's really excited about it because you can do some fun stuff with it. Trisha, okay. yes. Norma wants to know if you've tried 
the basting powder. I have not tried the basting powder yet, Norma, but we have it on our list to give it a, a try. Uh, if anybody has tried it, I would love to hear your feedback on it. I know that videos that I've watched, people are saying it is amazing. So I tend to use things that I know work really well. I'm kind of a, I'm frugal in that way that I know it works, so I'm going to use it. So, but I'll have to double check and see. So you just take this little fine tip, put it in those holes on the corner, wiggle it around a little bit. This is actually an air erasable marker, I believe. Nope, this one's a water erasable, so I'll be good. My air erasable marker disappears pretty quickly, but it's one of my favorite tools. So this one's not gonna disappear unless I add water. So we'll make sure that one's good. So you have these marked where you'll be able to pivot. Now, if it makes you feel even more comfortable, you could take your ruler and mark out a quarter inch all the way around, but because I'm using the side of my foot, this one's really easy to do. So you need to leave a two inch opening because we're gonna turn this out after we're done. So what I found works pretty well is starting towards the bottom and leaving and then pivoting here because it makes closing this up easier because you'll be able to sew all the way around and then stop about right here and then you're just able to turn it in and hand sew it when we're done. So we've got our batting and our topper, which are together because we used the adhesive spray, and then we have pretty sides to pretty sides. We've trimmed everything all up even, and we've marked all of those points so we know where to pivot. So now we're just going to start here. Oh, another thing, if you kind of forget to leave openings, feel free to just do a mark and you can't really see it on there, but put a little X on there just so you don't accidentally do that like I did before with choosing the way my fabric orientation was. <laughs> okay, on um, this we're gonna start with actually doing just a small back stitch. So we're gonna do a couple stitches, two or three, and I'm going to sew all the way up to my little spot there. Perfect, now I'm going to leave my needle down, lift up my foot, pivot my fabric, lined back up, and then I'm gonna lower my foot, and I'm lining it up with the edge. Again, depending on your machine, you may have to use the guideline on your plate, or maybe you use a seam guide, but just know that you're doing a scant quarter inch is what the pattern calls for. So we're going up to that little point. If you ever find that you stitch past a certain point, you can lower your stitch length when you get close to that particular spot. That way it does short itty bitty stitches and you get to the point that you want. And then once you pivot your fabric and you're starting again, you could always put it back up to the 2.5 for your stitch length. That's just a little tip if you kind of overshoot your point. So let's sew up to here. I think I should be good. It's really hard to see there, but I've got just a touch away. So I'm gonna turn this down really short and I'm gonna do one stitch and it's perfect. And I put it back to my 2.5. And then I can start. If you notice my fabric is off the side, this is a perfect opportunity to get an extension table. So if you've joined us for our Sew Creative Live events, Sew Study has joined us, you can get an acrylic table right here that will wrap around your machine and it gives you a beautiful flat sewing surface. So I wouldn't have to worry about my fabric flopping down and any of this uh, fabric that's all lined up nice and neat getting distorted. So that would be a great, great spot to use an extension table. And just a reminder, we do have a sale right now for any extension table that you purchase through um, our website that's a Sew Steady product. 
you can get the light stick for just $10. I believe that goes through the end of this month. So you can get the light stick to turn your acrylic table into a light box, which is really awesome. Then you can transfer patterns or do some fun things. I think, I think I'm okay on that one. So we're gonna pivot. Sew down this side. We're gonna do a couple stitches. That one I may have gone just a smidge far. That's all right. And then we're going to just do a few stitches and back stitch. And leave that two inch opening here so we can turn it right side out. Do we have any questions so at all? Uh, one day, can you all do something showing hand sewing? I'm finally fixing to try hand binding on my Tools Pink Butterfly. You know, Rebecca, I will be happy to do something on hand sewing, uh, but I need practice as well. You'll see that in just a minute. <laughs> but hand sewing is great. You know, maybe we can look for somebody on Sew Creative Live that would specialize in hand sewing that could teach us some good techniques. I, I'm down for that. Then we, we can all learn, right? Okay, so now normally I would take a little scissors and clip off any bulk here. The pattern may say that. Um, I did not do that before, but it makes sense to me. So we're just gonna take these corners. You wanna just take off the bulk. Just don't snip through the thread. That would be a bad day. And then here in just a moment, you're gonna see how handy that four in one tool is to get these corners nice and beautiful. Get rid of my scraps here. Now we're going to be turning this right side out. I did do some back stitches, so it is secured, but you still wanna be careful whenever you're turning anything out with such a small hole. So just take your time. And we'll get that turned out and then we'll get our tool and push out all of those corners. I see one of our Facebook users from Carrollton, Georgia. Georgia sorry, I'm late. Had to run errands. Oh, well, you are definitely able to catch the replay on our Facebook or our YouTube. And you can watch it back and still do this project. Okay, so I got mostly flipped out. As you can see, no corners, right? So let's grab our little handy dandy tool. And we will work those corners out, see? And this tool is so handy because it's not too sharp that you're going to poke through your fabric because there's nothing worse than doing that with like a pencil. I've done that so many times. You grab what's handy. But that's why this one's always in my, my sewing area. Get that poked out here. A little bit there. Now I could have seam ripped it originally, but I am liking this. I think it's cute. And then we've got this one corner up here. And that's why I bought this tool. Oh, cool. Adult bibs. That's awesome. Getting the corner poked out. Sweet. Yeah, this is such a handy tool. I am a very big fan. Brian and I did a little video on some of our favorite tools. I think that was back on, that might have been our first So Creative Live, or one of the first anyway. And I had mentioned both this tool and this tool because I love my little seam gauge. It's with me all the time. Okay, so now you see our opening. We're going to flip it in at a quarter inch on both of them. If you just stick both fingers in and kind of pull it to the side, generally that fabric will flop in for you. And at this point, I did grab um, Wonder Clips. And I found two Wonder Clips was perfectly sufficient for holding it. And I kept it right on the edge because that's a quarter inch. I didn't want to go like this, it doesn't hold it very well, so I actually bring it to the edge a little bit more and it holds it nice and secure, like that. 
and I have my needle and thread all handy dandy and Rebecca will see if I can make this work. <laughs> we were talking about this before where it's like a whip stitch. What I've been doing is just taking my thread, I already have a knot on the end and then I go in between and kind of come up and then pull this through and then I pulled too tight on my knot. There we go. And I'll trim that afterwards. But then what I do is just grab a little bit of the backing fabric and catch the front fabric and then pull it through this way. And I'm using this bright green in hopes that you guys will be able to see this time around because last time you couldn't see the thread very well. But if we want to go, now that it's caught on the top, we can just catch the backing, scooch up a little bit into the blue fabric and catch the top and pull it through that way. You're making it all nice and secure, but you don't see a lot of the stitches. So if anybody on is a pro hand sewer, <laughs> I would love to hear your tips and tricks because I'm sure it's really relaxing if you get a system down on doing this hand sewing. I guess it could come up like that. That works too. Now I'm set on finding somebody that does hand sewing for our Sew Creative Live. I think that would be a really cool segment. Maybe we could do different hand stitching techniques some that are common. I know people will call like a ladder stitch or a whip stitch. And then I'm just catching the top, going back in on the blue backing fabric, coming up and catching the top, pulling it through, and we're just getting little bites of it. So I will do that quickly. We want to pull that through. Patricia said, if you know a science geek, you can make it uh, like this one in black and yellow to look like a radioactive caution sign. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love that there was even an emoji for it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think you could really have some fun with this particular pattern. Everybody has one in the family. Gets their own little muggy rug. Very cute. So I don't need my wonder clip anymore. I think we're good. I should go back. There's a friend of ours on Facebook. You may have seen her on some of our So Creative Live. Her name is Heidi, and she's on High Couture on uh, Facebook. And she has a little tip on tying off your thread when you're hand sewing. I should have watched it beforehand. It's nice and secure. But she does something like she comes through and she loops it. And she loops it, and I think she goes between the two pieces of thread and then tightens it up and then does it one more time. And she said, you're not going to have that come out. So if anybody or wants to follow her, she has so many great tips. She is actually a, a design teacher and she just, she has so many, many awesome tips. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my thread pull it through to get rid of my tail and then I'm just gonna snip that off because that's sufficient for me until I learn with some more hand, tech, hand sewing techniques, right? And now, we'll scooch my little table back over. Hopefully my iron's still working. And we'll give it a good press. If you wanna pull up the main camera there, Alex. And Alex, you did a wonderful job. <laughs> Thank you. And also, I have to share this because you're going to love this, but Sir Robin the Chicken said, find the right fabric that looks like a shutter, and it would be a perfect photographer's gift. Uh, do you know why this is wonderful? <laughs> the two of us are both photographers. <laughs> I love that. So, Alex, what type of photography do you like to do? You want to tell a little bit about it? Yeah, fun. so, oh, there's three of us now. Wait, I got to figure this out. <laughs> She's doing awesome. This is her first time in the back end, so. Here we go. I'm a children and family photographer, but I mostly do fine art children photography. 
That's so cool. Yeah, she has a way different aspect than I do. I do motorsports photography. So yeah, I had to do our family picture when I was up in Minnesota and they asked me and I'm like, oh, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Completely <laughs> different, but no, it turned out well. So very good idea. I love that. All right, you guys. Well, we finished our project. How cute are they? They were intentionally unmatching, right? We're going to say that. But as I had mentioned before, anybody that just joined, this is what it's, whoops, here we go. This one. This is what it's supposed to look like according to the pattern. I started with the wrong color so my round doesn't match up the same way, but I think they're both really cute. So as I mentioned before, we're calling it a design element. I hope that you guys can all join us next week. Um, we are going to be doing that corky wallet. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun. After this, I will go onto our Facebook group, post all of the items that we use today in case you want to get all these handy dandy items. We've already posted the tool and the pattern, but since I just added the fusible batting, I'll be sure to send a link for that as well. And then also you know, some of these fun little notions that we used in case you're interested in those. And then I'll also go ahead and post our next one for next week where we're doing the Corky wallet and like, give you a supply list. So if you want to make it along with me, it's pretty straightforward. As I'd mentioned before, I tried using it with faux leather, not a good plan. Um, I did make it through because I changed to a Teflon foot and a leather needle but it wasn't pretty. So I'm very excited to make the Corky wallet with the actual cork. So <laughs> hopefully that works out well. But do we have any more questions before we head out today? My voice wasn't too squeaky. <laughs> Where is Brian today? He's not sick. He is actually checking out school. So he's looking at his next semester, seeing what it's all going to be like. So we were like, Brian, we can hold down the fort today. So I appreciate Alex and all her help. And we made it through. I think we, I think we did it without too many technical errors, right? <laughs> I think we did good. I think so. So Tammy, oh, thank you, Tammy. And thank you for watching. We really, really appreciate it. I hope you guys do send pictures to us on our Facebook group. And we're going to see all of the different options, biohazard or photography, <laughs> a little shutter. <laughs> Super cute. Deb Porter. Oh, Deb. Hi. Looking forward to the Corky Wallet as well as the upcoming So Creative Live in July. Awesome, Tammy. Yeah, we are very excited for the one in July. It is the 10th through the 14th. And our sponsors have been so wonderful with the giveaways. We have some awesome stuff in store. Also, in addition to our surprise word for the giveaways, you guys know how that goes, right? We're doing some extra fun stuff for people that place an order during the live. So you're going to want to tune into that. We have not done this yet. So I'm not going to tell you what it's all about yet and we'll, we'll keep it as a surprise. But we are going to be back next week for the Social Circle at 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. I appreciate everybody joining, and we will see you guys all next week. So you have a wonderful Wednesday.